Hello, welcome and happy new year. If you're watching this video on the day which I upload this, uh, it's the 1st of January 2020. So, um, what I have done is um, just to prepare um, um, my students or you guys um, for the unit one exam which is in two weeks time or, or less. Um, I've created a, what I refer to as the exam practice medley. Uh, it consists of 93 questions. Um, according to um, the, uh, the software, it estimate to take about 380 minutes to do. So I'm gonna hopefully before the term starts, uh, I'm going to create a video of um, the most crucial questions first and then hopefully I'll do the rest and make sure I have 93 um, videos at the end. So uh, let's kick off with our question one on the 1st of January. So um, looking at this, this is an electric circuit. Okay now um, just want to show you this is a very typical question it's worth nine marks so it's definitely worth it and it's nothing scary about this um, so you are given um, uh, voltages uh, two of them which is strange isn't it uh, and then you got some resistors and you've got some loops okay and it all, all it does uh, 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 it, it, it requires is to find out the current along this resistor here Okay, so uh, this is a typical question and it's all about Kirchhoff's current law and also the maths why is about simultaneous equations. So first of all, let's explain why there might be voltages um, in uh, a two voltage supply in a circuit. Well, if you think about, uh, uh, if you haven't seen that, uh, it's a, like computer motherboard, you will have a power supply to supply the circuits uh, of the motherboard. Uh, and then on the motherboard itself, it's, it's got this button battery, which supply the uh, uh, supply uh, battery supply for the um, uh, BIOS, etc. So, what you have to understand is they they can um, uh, uh, in a circuit there can be a multiple supply, okay? And when they are connected together, it forms a network. So. Therefore, um, there must be strategy um, in order for us to find um, current across resistors like this when there are two current flowing into it. Okay, so why is it Kirchhoff's current law? Well, because if you follow this left-hand loop, remember it's conventional current path is always from positive terminal to negative terminal. So therefore, I1 goes out here into this so-called junction and then I2 from positive to negative so it's going anti-clockwise so it goes into this junction as well now according to Kirchhoff's kernel the sum of the current going into a junction equals to the sum of the current flowing out of the junction so if these two are going in the, th the remaining one must be going out so for the first mark by writing I3 equal to I1 plus I2 this is achieved okay so this is the current uh, Kirchhoff's current law you don't actually have to specify it is a current uh, Kirchhoff's current law this is it okay so the next thing is in order to solve for the current I need to find uh, well, because I, I'm not given current um, at all, I'm just given the variable. So I need to develop equations, in fact, two equations, so that I can see solve simultaneously to find the current of I1 and I2, then therefore I can find out what I3 is. Well, what do we know about voltages? Well, voltage is equal to I times R, current times resistance. So I could now write a formula, uh, equations, first with my, from my left hand loop so I can say well the voltage supply is equal to the sum of the voltage dropped across the resistors so so the voltage supply is equal to the voltages across this resistors here well I'm not given the voltage but I can use 
current I1 because current flowing in uh, along the resistors in series are the same. So I can say it's I times resistance, total resistance in series is total, right? Is to add. So so therefore is I1 I times R, which is 10 plus 2. Then the current going along this resistor times the resistor 3 will give me the voltage drop at resistor number 3. So instead of writing I3, I'm going to stick with the um, variable I1 and I2 because I3 is equal to I1 plus I I2. So I can say the current I times R is I1 plus I2 drop across the resistor, which is 6. Okay, so this is I times R. Okay, and that is my first equation. Now I can sum, I can simplify this. If you multiply out the bracket, you will see that that's twelve I one, and that is going to be six I one, and then plus six I two. Now this is a moment where we can reflect because you know we, when we were doing GCSE maths, you know we keep doing simultaneous equations or multiplying bracket. What's the reason for this? Well, this is a demonstration of how we apply uh, GCSE maths in a real-life situation. This is, as, this is as, as real as it gets. That's what electronic engineers do, okay, when we find out, find currents uh, uh, um, on, a, on a certain path. Okay, so uh, 12I1 plus 6I1, get, get, that is a light term, so we can add that, and then that's 6I2. So that is my equation 1. Okay, so what am I going to do next? Well, I'm going to go ahead and find out using the right hand loop. Okay, so I'm going to start a new slide. Put this back here. Okay, so now I'm going to do right hand loop. Same thing. Okay, so the voltage supplied, okay, so is, is 9. And it equals to the voltage across here and across here. Okay, so uh, and therefore uh, I times R, so is the voltage. So the I is I two, so therefore is twenty two I two plus same thing. This is going to be I one plus I two, although we call that I three. So therefore is six I one plus I two again. And so therefore, we can say that there are 6 lots of I2 plus 22I2. So 6I1 plus 28I2. OK, that's, that's easy. So now we have two equations. So, so and we have, in each equation, there's only two variables, uh, I1 and I2. OK, and they're common two variables, by the way. So. Now, this is where you can decide which is your favorite. Is it the elimination method or is it the um, uh, uh, substitution method? Now, um, by observing the two, I can see. Let's, let's put these two equations together, shall we? So let's write down uh, equation 1 was uh, 12 equal to 18i1 plus 6i2. And then the second equation we have got is 9 um, and then 6i1 plus um, 28i2. Now, I don't know what you guys think, but I like the elimination method only because I spot something very quickly. Elimination method is about choosing a coefficient to make them the same, so that means it will allow us to eliminate that variable instantly. Now, I notice that 6 is a factor of 18, so I can multiply all this by 3. Um, I'm not actually changing anything, I'm just finding an equivalent equations, and that will give me both 18. So I could go ahead do that. Uh, it's, it's It just uh, feel that that's just the right thing to do. If you are in an exam, I, I mean, I can assure you, you just go ahead and do the elimination method. Okay, so um, uh, so what I tend to do, this is what I learned in school, is just we have to rewrite it again. Okay, so so you have to write fast in the exam, okay? Uh, 9, 3 is 27, 
and then 6, 3 is 18, that's the reason why we times 3 and then uh, 28 times 3 is 84 I think um, 84 I2 okay so now you've got to decide now uh, rather to add the equation or subtract the equations to get rid of the 18. Now, uh, 18 take away 18 is obviously zero, so you should you should take away. Now, if you have seen my other video on solving simultaneous equations, there is a little shortcut where if you if the coefficient that you are trying to compare they're both positive or both negative, you are always going to subtract. Okay, so. Uh, but if you are very um, um, new to this, then I suggest that you just do it this way, which is to observe this and ask yourself what makes them zero. Okay, so 18 minus 18. Okay, so 12 take away 27 is going to be negative. So uh, then I can do 27 take away 12. That will give me 15. And then um, here get becomes naught, and six take away eighty four is going to give me seventy eight, but negative seventy eight i two. So uh, to get to find i two, you have to divide by the minus seventy eight on both sides because it's multiplying i two. So divide both sides by minus seventy eight. So i two. Uh, works out to be um, 15 over 78 okay amps um, or uh, if we put it into decimal form um, I'm reluctant uh, to do that because we still need to use the number not rounded to work out the next value so um, so I'll do that so that gives me 0 0.1923. Now, what I would suggest you guys would do, don't write round it to two decimal places. So do do that, okay? And put that numbers in, uh, and it will give you um, it will give you more accurate. So you always round at the at your final answer, not at, not before, okay? So um, okay, so now we found i2, so we can now substitute i2 into one of these equations to find i1 okay now I quite like to substitute that in here because I all have to do is just do 6 times rather than 28 times okay but either way uh, these equations will also give you the same answer so um, again it's just skill you have to learn to do to keep, keep things easy for yourself okay so I'm going to substitute into equation 1 so what I would get is 12 lots of a uh, 12 equal to 89 1 uh, plus 6 lots of um, let's say um, I'm gonna just gonna I'm gonna do that okay um, because that that is the exact number right um, so okay so let's do 6 lots of 15 divided by 78 so 6 lots of 15 then divide by 78 uh, and then um, so that gives me 12 18 I1 plus um, 1.1538 1.1538 and then dot 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 just to tell the examiner that there are more numbers to follow but not spending time writing it all out okay so to f so we can swing that to the other side by subtracting it so therefore 18 i1 is equal to 12 take away 1.1538 okay so now if you have those scientific calculators where you got an answer you could just simply clear it and then just do 15 take away the ans button okay but what i would do here because I can't so I'm going to do a little clever thing um, so I will take away 12 now notice it's going to be a negative number but it's actually the positive version of it so 10.846 so um, so that means um, our 89.1 is equal to 10.846 dot 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 and so I1 is this is that answer 
divide by 18. And that comes to 0 0.602. So 0 0.60. Okay, I'm just going to stick to 0 0.60 to M there. Okay, you can, I think at this stage you can round. Um, because the 602 should make little difference in a moment to my answers. So, uh, right, okay, so we now know uh, I1 is 0 0.60m and I2 is uh, 0.192m. Okay, so um, let's, let's, okay, 19602, uh, 1923. So let's, let's, let's uh, because we, I rounded to four, four uh, okay, let's, let's, let's write six zero two five, dot dot dot. Okay, so um, if you now go ahead and record the original um, uh, Kirchhoff's current law, we said that I three. So if I bring this back here, we said that I three is equal to I1 plus I2, right? So I3 is equal to I1 plus I2. So since we already know what I1 and I2 is, well, the, the rest is easy, isn't it? So uh, we can go and say, well, um, where it's going to be um, 0 0.1923 plus uh, 0 0.60, 0 0.60m. So I3 is equal to 0.79m. There you are. That's the answer to this. So if you really put a volt, uh, uh, so M meter uh, in series with this resistor, you will find that it will read 0.79M, um, theoretically, um, ignoring any internal resistance, etc., or uh, um, heat dissipated from a wire, etc. But Anyway, so let's just quickly summarize uh, before we end this um, session. So the idea is, the first step is to make sure you you spot the characteristics of this question. Two voltages, um, loops, it's always a hint. Uh, and then the first thing you must do is to write down the Kirchhoff's um, uh, current law based uh, uh, via an equation uh, involving just the current. That's why it's called Kirchhoff's current law. And then solve the problem with a left-hand loop to create an equation, not actually solve uh, 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 to find an answer, just to set up an equation with a variable i1 and i2. Okay, And then do the same again with the right-hand loop. And then um, and and then you got another equation. So uh, the only thing I would really emphasize is do not use I three. Use some of the total current. Otherwise, you will have three variables, and that that's that just that would not not allow you to use elimination method or simultaneous equation at all. Okay, so then you solve that, and then you can choose rather to use elimination method. I chose elimination method, and then you just substitute find your answer and then recall what you said in the first um, uh, uh, when you stated at the start and then there you are I3 and try to not round your answers uh, in your working uh, only do it at the end okay okay thank you